Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk today. I'm going to tell you about my some of my research from my dissertation on the wire-tailed mannequin. And I want to start by telling you about the mating system of this species. And so wire-tailed mannequins are lecking species like many other mannequins. And when within the forest, males are spatially aggregated in areas called leks. And within each lek, males have territories where they perform these courtship displays, often these acrobatic courtship displays for females. And so what females will do, is they'll fly through the forest and visit multiple males performing these displays and choose whichever male they think is the best to mate with. And females are very selective and only a few males are successful in this system. And what makes the wire tail mannequin especially interesting is that males perform these coordinated courtship displays that look like this. And so these displays form the basis of long-term partnerships between unrelated individuals. And so because these males will continue to interact with each other over the course of time, wire-tail mannequins actually form social networks. And remember that many of the interactions between males within this network are these coordinated displays. Of course, there are other types of interactions, but it's important to keep in mind that when males interact, they're frequently performing these acrobatic displays together. And so within the social system of wire-tailed mannequins, they're both floater males and territory holders. And uh, this isn't the system like similar to, a, it's not like the, in the case like the rough where males, um, or sorry, floater males can sneak copulations from territory holders or anything like that. It's actually the case that the territory holders sire the vast majority of offspring. And so these floater males are really queuing for status to become territory holders. Now we see differences with age-related differences in plumage and, 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 as, and also behavior. So as males get older, they spend more time at the lek, really forming and maintaining these partnerships with territory holders. And a few things about the wire tail mannequin from previous studies, we know that it pays to be social in this system. So among floater males, those that are more social have a higher probability of becoming a territory holder. And then among territory holders, those that are more social have higher reproductive success. And the relationship between reproductive success and male social behavior may be due to the fact that more social males spend more time performing these displays. And we also know that males exhibit consistent individual differences in their social behavior. So some males are consistently more social and some males are consistently less social. And today I wanna to talk to you about the consequences of individual variation in male social behavior. And I wanna eat, and I approach this question using telomeres. So telomeres are, are repetitive sequences of DNA found at the end of eukaryotic chromosomes. And so it's these six sequences repeated over and over and over again. And this sequence is conserved across eukaryotes and the fact that it's the same suggests that changing the sequence has, can have big consequences and it underscores the importance of telomeres to cellular function. And so I like to think about telomeres as the aglets that are found on the end of shoelaces because they really have been shown to be responsible for maintaining chromosomal integrity and then also delineating the ends of chromosomes during replication. And so telomeres are particularly interesting because they change in length through time. And at the molecular level, this, this change in telomere length is due to both the DNA replication process as well as oxidative stress. And once telomeres shorten to a certain length, cells enter a state of replicative senescence. And when whole tissues or whole organs exhibit short telomeres, um, in terms of the functioning of that tissue or organ, it can, it can start to malfunction. And, and this can really um, cause problems in terms of organismal functioning more broadly. And so biologists have identified a number of factors that contribute to telomere shortening. And these include um, aging so, or longevity. So within species, uh, individuals that live longer or between species that, so species that live longer exhibit slower rates of telomere shortening. And then an individual's nutritional status can influence how fast their telomere shorten. An individual's disease status can influence the rates of their telomere shortening. So things like avian malaria can accelerate telomere shortening. 
and aspects related to an individual's environment, such as the land cover or the temperature, precipitation. So these things related to climate, climatic factors basically can influence rates of telomere shortening. And lastly, an individual's developmental environment, as well as their reproductive effort can both influence rates of telomere shortening. And, and we also see relationships between telomeres, lifespan, and, and mortality risks. So within a species, um, if we look at, or sorry, across species, so if we look at the relationship between that species average lifespan here on the y-axis and how quickly their telomere shorten, we see that longer lived species is a bit faster rates of telomere shortening. Sorry, longer lived species exhibit slower rates of telomere shortening. And then within species, if we look at the relationship between mortality risk and telomere length, in general, we see that shorter telomeres are associated with higher mortality risks. So because telomeres integrate information about, individu about an individual's environment and physiology, and also predict or relate to their mortality risk, telomeres are often, are, are often considered markers of an individual's biological age. And so by examining changes in telomere lengths, we can understand the factors that are influencing rates of aging in, in free living species. And this is really cool. And, it, and it's a, a, a new tool that, for the field biologist to heal toolkit. And, and so today, as I said before, I'm going to talk to you using telomeres to look at the proximate consequences of male social behavior. And to get at this question, what we did was we um, sampled an individual twice. So we collected a blood sample each time. And then uh, the sampling interval was either three months or one year on average between two samples. And then between these two sampling time points, we also measured a male social behavior using a proximity data logging system that's described in this paper here. Um, what, how this system works, it uses radio telemetry to, to examine or to, to measure when multiple males are within a given area. And so by looking at the spatiotemporal overlap between tag detections within a given male's territory, we can quantify various metrics that describe the male's behavior. And this includes the number of display partners a male has, how frequently they interact with other individuals, and then a male's importance. So importance is a network level metric that describes the exclusivity of a male's partnerships. So partners of males with higher importance spend uh, more of their time interacting with that individual as opposed to the other individuals within their network. And it's basically a metric of popularity. So males with higher importance, are, you can consider them to be more popular within their social network. And to examine uh, which factors are most important in determining a male's telomere lengths? We use model selection and we use linear models um, to, to model these relationships. And the response variable is the change in telomere length. And the explanatory variables included uh, one of the three behavioral metrics I just described, an individual's social status, whether they're a floater or a territory holder, and then an individual's initial telomere length. And we had a total of 52 models. And I, I view each one of these models as a hypothesis. So support for any given model support, supports the, you know, some of these relationships. So for instance, if the top supported model included one of the three behavioral metrics, that suggests that a male's social behavior is an important determinant of their telomere dynamics. Now, if social status is included in, in one of the top supported models, well, that supports the hypothesis that individual social status is important in terms of uh, their telomere dynamics. And previous studies on hyenas have shown that social status can really influence a male's telomere length. So in this case, these higher ranking females, which have access to higher quality resources, exhibit longer telomeres than these lower ranking males. And, and it's not only these resources that are driving this pattern, but it's the fact that these higher ranking individuals often beat up these lower ranking males. So it's a combination of resource accessibility as well as these aggressive interactions that are determining the telomere lengths in this, in this situation. And in the case of mannequins, wiretail mannequins, one of the biggest differences we see is that while only territory holders reproduce, 
but they also spend significantly more time on the legs than these floater males. And that's basically because they're waiting around for females to show up. And then things like grouse in North America, uh, prolonged lek attendance can be costly. And so we might expect that territory holders in this case exhibit greater rates of telomere attrition than floater males. And then an individual's initial telomere length, so previous studies have shown that longer telomeres shorten faster than um, uh, shorter telomeres. So in this, so we included this in, the, in our models as well. And so we had a total of 63 data points and this, and it represents 37 males. And the top supported model included the number of partners a male has and then the sampling interval. And these are additive effects here. And so what this sampling interval, I'm not going to show you this relationship, but what it shows basically is that the, the rate of telomere shortening is, is slower over, over shorter sampling time periods, but it doesn't affect the slope, only the intercept. Okay. And so when we look at the relationship between the number of partners here on the x-axis and then the, the rates of telomere shortening on the y-axis, what we see is that males with more partners exhibit greater rates of telomere loss. Now in this y-axis here, I meant to mention this, this has been corrected for the regression to the mean. And so higher values indicate greater rates of shortening. And so yeah, that's the result we see. And notice that there was no support for um, an individual's social status in either, so floater or territory holders, they didn't exhibit contrasting patterns of telomere dynamics. And so when I, when I think about these worlds, well, the metabolic costs of these display behaviors are likely important. So a male's social behavior determines how frequently, or it's an important determinant of how frequently they perform these acrobatic courtship displays that have previously been shown to be metabolically demanding in another species of mannequin. And so I think the relationship between social behavior and display behaviors is likely an important driver, or it's likely a, a, an important reason as to why we see this relationship between telomere dynamics and social behavior. And the rates of telomere shortening depended upon how many partners a male has. Now we had models that included each of these three behavioral metrics. And so it wasn't how many males, sorry, it wasn't how frequently males interact with, it wasn't their social network position, but rather just how many males they interacted with that, that we found support for. And to me, I think this, this suggests that maybe perhaps there are some costs to the behavioral plasticity that is needed or, or required to interact with so many partners. There's lots to speculate as to why it's this variable that's important, but that's something that stuck out in my mind. And we also saw no effect of social status. So wire-tailed mannequin legs have previously been shown to exhibit significantly more fruiting, and, fruiting shrubs in the understory and, and plants in general. And wire tail or mannequins are known to be seed dispersers. So, so they've basically cultivated these areas in the forest with lots of fruiting plants. And because resources are so abundant in these leks, I think that's why we see no effect of social status. So it, it's likely the abundance of resources on the leks. And then also the fact that males don't exhibit aggressive, aggressive interactions very frequently. So I think it's the, the nature of these interactions and then also um, the resource abundance on the legs that's important or that's why we don't see any effect of social status in this case. So with that I would like to thank the following people for their various contributions to this project and I would also like to thank uh, Brent Horton another PI on the Wiretail Mannequin project for his mentorship over the course of my graduate education and then also his contributions in the field. And I would like to thank the following funding sources and I would like to also thank the organizers of the symposium. So Alice and Elsie, thank you for organizing this symposium. It's, I've really enjoyed participating. And then the organizers of NAOC, thank you for putting this conference together over such a short time frame. Uh, I think this virtual conference has been really successful and I've really enjoyed um, having these talks so, being so accessible, not only during the conference, but afterwards, it's been really great to rewatch some of these talks. And before I go, I just wanted to point you in the direction of some of our other research on the relationship between testosterone and uh, male behavior in this system. 
not only do we look at individual variation in, in, in behavior and testosterone, but we also look at social network dynamics and how um, testosterone relates to those, those dynamics. So it's not only individual level analyses, but it's also the network level analyses. And I encourage you to check it out. And it also, if you can access this talk, I want to point you at in the direction of another talk by Meredith Cruzel on the relationship between telomeres and um, and, and a species that in the Lansdale mannequin. And with that, I'll take any questions you have and thank you for listening.